Stolen Words by Melanie Florence and Gabrielle Grimard. She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath, clutching a dream catcher she had made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and a brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced against her shoulders, swaying with her, black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clutching his hand, spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing a moment. A lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown clouded her face. How do you lose words, Grandpa? she asked. Oh, they took them away, he answered. And she thought for a moment. Where did they take them, she asked. Where they took all of us, he said. Away from home, away from laughter and soft words, away from our mothers who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hands. Who took you away, Grandpa, she asked quietly. Men and women dressed in black. Talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa, she asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces raised their voices and their hands when we used our words, he answered. They took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his weathered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. She looked down at her lap and handed him the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it will help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face a face that had never known hard words or raised hands, and he smiled and kissed her head. The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling wildly at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. Dinasi Nimosun, she said. His eyes widened, and she smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, Grandpa, she said. She pulled a tattered and well-worn paper back out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this for you in the library. He reached for it, his hands shaking, opened it, feeling the soft, much-loved pages under his fingers. No, see Sim, he whispered, granddaughter. The word felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home, his mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Masina Hikam, book. He turned another, word after word. Pikiska Wewina, his words, pages and pages of them. He looked at his granddaughter, his nosisum. Thank you. Taniki, he said. Will you read to me, she asked taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest.